Happy Easter, and welcome to Church of the Resurrection. My name is Liz Titchener, and I am so glad to have you here today. And now I'm going to walk over to this camera. Welcome, wherever you are coming to us from, welcome and happy Easter. It is a joy to be together to sing and to worship on this festival day. Everything that you need to join in our worship is in the bulletin. It's a PDF that you can find in the comments. It has our readings and our prayers and our hymns. I invite you to join that, to pull that up, that you may join from home. We'll begin with song.
The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, 
of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Good Christian hearties, I can sing Now is the triumph of our King To all the world that is weeping Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ.
know what it is to find yourself without hope. I remember what it feels like in my body to have suddenly lost the ability to hope to no longer understand what that verb could mean for me as an active way of life. I have tried to move in that thick haze, finding myself utterly without words, grasping at straws. Loss does this to us. And my goodness, has this year been rife with it. Fear and pain and loss, they can all leave us unsure of where to go, uncertain where even to begin. Whether we have sustained that loss personally or simply stood in quiet, sorrowful witness to so many people losing so very much this year. It can break us apart, dismantling our ability to see, to imagine, and perhaps most distressingly, all this loss can shatter our capacity to hope. This is where we encounter the women of the tomb this Easter morning. I call them that, the women of the tomb, both because they have the striking courage to return there to this place of raw grief, and also because the tomb seems to define the state of their hearts. Mary Magdalene Mary, the mother of James and Salome, they are consumed by the tomb and all that attends it. Frustration, deep grief, confusion, terror, awe. These women come setting out at dawn to anoint his body. And as the sun rises, The world seems to have broken completely apart. Nothing is predictable. Nothing makes sense. Hope must have seemed so far beyond their reach that first morning. As I listened again to the story, I saw in my mind the quiet path left behind a tornado. Growing up in the Midwest, I remember vividly the way in which tornadoes so literally take the world and turn it upside down. Barns left teetering on their bare rafters. Ancient trees splintered like twigs. Cars dropped in nonsensical places. Swing sets left where no child could have played. I was never hurt in a tornado. I myself never lost anything. But I remember them with awe. Here, 2,000 years after that first Easter, I think it can be difficult to comprehend how shattered the disciples' world was. Their hope their community, their expectation of how this Messiah was going to save them from the Roman Empire, all this had been obliterated. The women come through the rubble of their hearts to the tomb. The morning shadows still stretching long. I imagine they can't quite see clearly. They stumble numbly in their grief, holding each other up as they come to anoint his body. They come because this simple act of care seems to be the only good thing they can do. But there at the tomb, the story begins to shift. The women are greeted by a stranger, someone radiant and absolutely perplexing. He has been raised, the stranger cries. 
How can this be so? How can he be joyful right now? It must have stung their raw pain. They are amazed by what they hear, yes, but it doesn't undo all they have just witnessed. They are still heartbroken and they are still terrified. And so they run from the tomb and remain silent. They are still squarely in the ruins the tornado has left behind. They have heard of the resurrection, but they haven't been able to enter into that risen life. Not yet. They haven't yet begun to hope again. Here's the thing about tornadoes. The day is often unbelievably calm not long after one passes. The wind subsides, the sky clears, the sun returns. Everything looks so normal if you look up. But casting your eyes across the ground, it is far from it. What comes next is grueling work. It is the slow, tenuous labor of clearing away what has been destroyed, of preparing the land to rebuild, to replant. The return to the life we sought takes a long time and a lot of hard work from the whole community together. I want to suggest that this is where we are right now. It's where those women were as they left the tomb, and I think it's where we are now more than a year into this pandemic. So much has been fractured. The, the pieces of our lives cast about by forces so much greater than any one of us and left in, in disrepair around our feet. Even as the good news of new life comes, it can be difficult to begin to live it right away. I can stand here and say to you that God is making all things new. Right now, even as the pan pandemic wears on still further and we remain apart. I can insist that as we celebrate the stunning gift and mystery of the resurrection, we proclaim that death does not have the final word. Not even here. Not even now. I can come before you on this Easter morning and share the promise that God is with us through it all that we will come to know that grace and beauty again. I trust this. And friends, these words may still seem awfully far off. It may be that the terror still grips us, that the grief is still too present, that the new life that is coming is beyond that we can yet fathom. And so what I really want to say to you this morning is that it is just fine if hope seems to slip through your fingers these days. Of course those first witnesses at the tomb were perplexed and terrified. We too are, are standing in the middle of the wreckage it's okay if hope feels distant. What comes first is the slow and steady work of rebuilding. Painstakingly sorting through all the tornado has left behind. We make a path. We clear the ground slowly. Eventually, we begin to build again. On this utterly strange Easter morning, beautiful and quiet as it is, I want to suggest that this today is just the beginning. 
Hope doesn't always come roaring back, fully formed, ready to carry us into the fullness of life. I think we need to take time to re-hope ourselves, just as we would rebuild. I think we're being called into a whole season of this work, of making way for hope again. Each bit of of clearing the broken mess from the ground, each hour spent facing the fear that remains. Even, Even the time in silence, wondering what words might come to describe what we've seen. Each of these acts can begin to cultivate hope once again. Slowly, we pick up the pieces of this hope. Day after day, week after week, until finally it takes hold and is our way, our being. There at the tomb, the women are still too grief-stricken to register hope, too afraid to receive it and live with it. This continues as Jesus appears to more followers and they can't recognize him. They can't believe it's really happened. It takes time. And so I'm all the more grateful that we have not just this one day of Easter, but a whole season of Eastertide. These 50 days when gradually, deliberately, We can give ourselves over to the practice of choosing hope, of offering hope, of receiving it maybe even before we can really wrap our minds around it. This is the sacred work of re-hoping ourselves, of bringing hope back into our center as the source the reason, the vision. It's okay if you're not there yet. We will keep moving towards hope together for as long as it takes us to get there. Never he would wake again. Lady, 
Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. Joining with all those who have prepared and yet still long for this water of new life, I call upon you to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promised to serve God faithfully in the Holy Catholic Church. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in, in God, God the, Father the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of, of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, our Lord. Lord. He, he was, was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit, I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray that the fruits of Christ's resurrection may be seen in our lives and throughout the world. Lord God, our loving heavenly creator, we thank and praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Passover Lamb, who has taken away the sin of the world. Give new life to us, and all people. After his rising, Jesus said, Peace be with you. Bring your peace to this world and to our own land. Hear us, God of great compassion. Your son appeared to Mary Magdalene when she was weeping. Comfort those who are suffering, lonely, or grieving, especially those on our parish prayer list and those we now name aloud or silently. Hear us, God of great compassion. The risen Christ met the women and ask them to tell the disciples about his resurrection. Guide Christians everywhere to witness to the power of faith in their lives. Hear us, God of great compassion. Jesus revealed himself to the two disciples through the scriptures and made himself known to them in the breaking of the bread. Make him known to us and all people through the teaching of your word and at the feasts of your holy people. Hear us, God of great compassion.
their son strengthened the faith of Thomas by telling him to touch his hands and side. Reassure those who are troubled by doubts and strengthen their faith in your goodness. Hear us, God of great compassion. Your son conquered death by his death and won the victory by his resurrection. Be with those who have died and lead them to life with you forever. This day we remember Carl Kiesler, Joyce Gray, Chris Levesque, John Motley, and those who we now name aloud or silently. now celebrate these joyful holy days here on earth may finally praise you forever with all the angels and saints in heaven we ask this through your risen son Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever And now may the peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. On this day, God has acted. Jesus Christ is risen. Let us rejoice and be glad. of you, O God, and of your own have have we we given you.
Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has has died. died. Christ Christ is risen. risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Christ, who liveth God the Father,
as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let let us keep keep the the feast. feast. Alleluia. And let us pray together. In union, Mm -hmm. O Lord, Lord, with with your your faithful people people, who long long to gather gather at every every altar of your church, church, where where the the Holy Holy Eucharist Eucharist has been celebrated and and we pray will be celebrated again soon. We We desire to offer to you you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Okay, if you are celebrating a birthday or an anniversary, some other moment of grace that you wish to give thanks to God for, I invite you to type that into the comments now, along with any other concern that is on your heart that you would like prayers for. Woo, there we go, technology. Um, so I invite you to put all that in, uh, in the comments now, and we will pray with those in just a minute. First, I have a number of uh, announcements, and, and honestly, primarily uh, gratitude. I'd like to begin by offering thanks for all those who brought food yesterday, uh, been collecting food all through the, monument, all through, uh, the season of Lent for Monument Crisis Center, and believe that Ken is going to pull that up for you to see and let us pray together for this bounty. God, we give you thanks for all that you do to feed us, for generous hearts, for those who grow food and make it, carry it forth, and all those who share it. Bless this food, that it may be a sign of your presence, a gift of your strength for all those who are in need. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 
And another form of feasting, of, of sharing bread together, is that we are sharing communion today. It's been tricky and a long, long time that we have not been able to do this much at all. Uh, a good number of you signed up to come and pick up the bread that we've just blessed together, and there's, there's plenty. So if you haven't, uh, swing on by. Uh, we'll be here at the church between 12 and 1 out front um, with masks and distance and all that, and you can pick up communion to share with your family or to meet back on Zoom uh, just for a little while this evening at five to share in communion together. And finally, um, thank you. There are so many people who have made this Holy Week possible. A, A second Holy Week in pandemic and at a distance And uh, it always takes a lot of work, but that makes it all the more complicated. So thank you to all of you who have worked hard and been creative in making candles, in decorating the space, in caring for the space, and uh, the staff making bulletins and keeping people connected and making sure everyone has what they need. To the musicians, especially to Charles and to Rob, Uh, others who have lent their voices to the strain, uh, and perhaps most particularly uh, to the voices of our lay leaders here tonight, uh, here today, and in recent nights, and to our uh, ever-steady tech crew in Ken and in Rob for making the image and uh, the sound possible. Truly, this year, it would not be possible any other way. And I am grateful. There are many ways uh, to connect and plug into community, even from afar. Uh, If you're joining us for the first time or the first time in a while this day, know that you are welcome. You're welcome to come and visit. Um, We've got Zoom gatherings and uh, Zoom classes. And hopefully, before too long, we will be gathering outside again as well. So I'd love to hear from you if you're interested in finding out more about what it might be to be in community here. If this might be a fit for you, please be in touch. We'd love to talk with you. And now, our prayers this day. See that Carol's granddaughter Tara has been in labor since Friday, asking prayers for a safe delivery, a healthy baby girl. Jim celebrated a birthday this past Tuesday. Prayers for the excellent video and audio team. Yes. A gratitude from John for a successful heart procedure a week and a half ago. Uh, <laughs> Jim shares that the Easter Bunny has come by with more food and, uh, and also filling the bird feeders back up. This is so good. Um, Laurel shares that Pat is together again with Laurel and Saki in Pleasant Hill. Gail gives thanks for Gabriel, her grandson, who is 13 today. Uh, Gary gives thanks for successful eye surgery. And more, I know. I give thanks myself for my brother, whose birthday was yesterday. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for all these abundant blessings, for your light and your joy that keeps us going. We give you thanks for for health, for recovery, for the possibility of more abundant life through the wonder of modern medicine. We give you thanks for new years of life. We pray for the life that is emerging right now, this very day. Ask that you would be present with all those who labor, Tara especially, and her baby girl. We ask that you would be present with all of us this day and the days ahead as we look for ways to be connected to one another and to you as we cherish the opportunity to gather in whatever form it takes, knowing that no matter how we come together, you are there present with us. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
And now may Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us her children through the resurrection of her Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of her blessing. Amen. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Welcome, happy morning to my chosen. Heaven is always coming on today. Oh, God is here in heaven. You have to create a to the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.